Now, to continue with our program, I'd like to introduce by name and county our candidates tonight. And they are, from Franklin County, Glenn Bradley. From Forsyth County, Joyce Crawford. From Franklin County, Major Dave Getz. And from Guilford County, Marcus Kinley. Very quickly, the rules for the forum for our candidates and for everybody here watching, and uh, it is working like this. We'll have opening statements that last no more than three minutes. These are maximum times. You don't have to fill the whole time, but the bell rings and you've got to stop talking. And I, as we mentioned these times, remember that you as the audience have a part to play. We don't want to, to interrupt their thought flow, even though you may be excited to hear some of the things, because that time marches on, and if we have too much encouragement from the audience, we'll be robbing each of our candidates from the time that they have been allotted, so keep that in mind. Three minutes for opening statement. We'll allow two minutes maximum for each of our questions. We hope to have some questions from the floor, and then at the uh, closing remarks, we'll again have three minutes each per candidate. Is everybody clear on that? And everybody thinks it's fair. Very good. Um, the bell, if you give us the bell one more time, sir. Once you hear that, that's it. So just know. We'll start, if you would, and we're going to go. Uh, everybody got a microphone and just make sure it, it works and uh, maybe tap just on it. Just just yeah, okay. And Mr. Bradley, we'll start just with just you, just and we're going to allow you a three minute opening statement. So if you'll begin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out here to tonight's forum. My name is Glenn Bradley. I'm a former United States Marine, and I served as first vice chairman of the Franklin County Republican Party, and I served in the North Carolina General Assembly. The reality is, is our nation is in crisis. As we look around, we can see a lot of the issues that are going on with uh, the worst president in American history, and we realize that the source of our problems is that we've come away from the United States Constitution. In order to save the United States, we have to come back to the strict construction of the United States Constitution. And this has been a Republican uh, platform since the very since John Fremont, since Frederick Douglass, and uh, Barry Goldwater, Robert Taft. This is one of the richest Republican platforms that has existed in the history of the Republican Party. And not only does the strict construction of the United States Constitution, uh, not only is it a rich Republican platform, but it also brings the people that we need to survive into the future. It brings the critical millennial generation, the 18 to 32 year olds that we've lost over the last four to eight years. And we can bring those back by enforcing the Constitution. And not only that, but it also brings minority voters into the Republican Party. One of the experiences that I had had was in Roanoke Rapids, where there were uh, overwhelmingly majority African American precincts, and I discussed the need to restore the vision of Frederick Douglass, who believed until the day he died that the best guarantee of human and civil liberties was the strict and equal enforcement of the United States Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in trouble, but we can take it back. We have a lot of hope. Because what we have right now is an opportunity unlike any that we've ever had to bring back the full construction of the Constitution and to become the Republican Party that saved America. If we want to guarantee Republican success for the next 20, 30, 40 years, the way we do it is we become the party that saved America for all time. My name is Glenn Bradley. I'm asking for your vote. A vote for Glenn Bradley is a vote for party unity, for party expansion into the youth and minority demographics, and for the strict construction of the U.S. Constitution. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Ramona, for planning this event. We appreciate it. These guys and I are friends. We're having a good time on the campaign trail. Marcus I've known for an eternity. Glenn, not quite as long. I mean, Glenn I don't know as well. Dave I know very well. And we are good friends. We will be friends after this campaign is over. Um, 
I'm running because I think I have something to offer. I think we will all be wonderful vice chairmen. You will not make a mistake in this race. I'll tell you that right up front. Of course, I think I'll do the best job. So just to add that in. Um, I am a grassroots person, as most of you know. I am Christian first, conservative, Republican third, a distant third. My conservative principles guide everything that I do. My Christian faith guides everything that I do. So that is foremost in my mind. The Republican Party is the home of conservatism. And it's also the only place where Christians are welcome today, as you know. So our party has a wonderful platform. We have wonderful ideas. We don't always do a very good job of selling those ideas. That's where we're really lacking. And we've got to be better salesmen. We've got to be better at selling our product, which is our belief in the Republican Party. Um, there, I'm going to give you a quote. P.J. O'Rourke said, The Democrats are the party that says government will make you smarter, taller, richer, remove the crabgrass from your lawn. The Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work, and then they get elected and they prove it. <laughs> I think that's what happened with some of our Republican principles, and I think that's what ha happened with the Tea Party movement, the grassroots movement. I believe if the Republican Party had been doing our job completely, there would never have been a Tea Party movement. I think that we have to reach out, do a better job of reaching out to that grassroots. The closest thing the Republican Party has ever had to a grassroots movement is the Republican women. And I'm just going to tell you, in every county, without the Republican women, nothing seems to get done. They are the backbone of the party. They do the work. And when I first got involved with Republican women, I, went, I was a vice chairman and I served in a lot of capacities. I served on boards at the National. And then when uh, Valerie White was elected, she said, what would you like to do with Republican women? I said, I would like to be a legislative chair and I would like for us to tackle tough issues. We, I will study the issues, I will bring the information back to our ladies, we will lobby those guys in Raleigh and in Washington and we will get things done. And we did. You saw it through the marriage amendment. Without Republican women, that would have never gotten off the ground. Voter ID, we started that groundswell. Republican women rock, y'all. Thank you, Scott. Who is this? Mr. Gates. Thank you. My name is Major Dave. The name is Dave Getz. Getz is one of those last names that's easily misspelled and, and more easily mispronounced. So it's better that you just know me as Major Dave. Many of you got to know me out in the field, at the rallies, doing what needed to be done, chipping in in every way that I could. And to me, this is not a political campaign, it's a job interview, and that's why I wore my work clothes. This is a field position for the vice chair in the state, getting out in the counties, making sure that you have what you need to be successful in doing what you do. I talk a lot about the platform and the values we stand for as a Republican, because what it means to be a Republican has lost its definition and clarity. We have developed a term called rhinos, and we use that when people call themselves a Republican to stand for something different than the platform. But my whole purpose in running goes back to the very founding of this country. Our fathers, founding fathers, did not create a Christian theocracy in this country. But make no mistake, they did create a God-centered government. And then they created a constitution to ensure that it remained that way. That is the whole purpose of our protecting our religious freedom so that we, the people, can ensure that we remain a godly, morally centered country. We see the assault in the military right now on our chaplains and on their expressions of faith. And in the 20 years I served in the military and every veteran I've ever met, we served for God and country. And we took an oath to the Constitution. I took that oath six times in my career, not just once. And the ID card in my pocket today says it is still as valid today as it was back in 1974 when I took it the first time. And I am here to make sure that our Republican Party remains the standard bearer for traditional conservatism. 
We are not the United Nations. We do not allow anybody with an opinion to come into our party and dominate. We have a platform that you, the delegates, the registered voters, already approve. And that would be my duty as the vice chair to stand up for that platform, not to see it change or to try to facilitate that change. I'm 100% comfortable with it exactly like it is. We've got marriage and traditional family in there. We've got the limited government, lower taxes, personal responsibility, and free markets that all of my Tea Party friends agree with. That's the basis for unity, not in modifying or going through some metaphor morphosis to please a, a, a fringe group. We have to stand firm. I cannot go out as vice chair and recruit if I can't tell those people with clarity and certainty just what it is they're volunteering for. So you have my commitment, and I thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Keeley, three minutes for the next speaker. We need to unite. Is it working now? Yes. We the people, the state of North Carolina, grateful to Almighty God, the sovereign ruler nation, for the preservation of this union, and for the existence of our civil, political, and religious liberties, acknowledging our dependence upon him for the continuance of these blessings to us and our posterity, do therefore the security thereof for the people of this state ordain this constitution, this preamble to North Carolina Constitution. If you read the second article, you'll see where it says all government comes from the people. It's granted by the people of the state of North Carolina. The reason I started that off with is yes, I think the Republican Party is God centered. We say it in our state preamble. A little bit about me I was three term chairman of Guilford County. I'm very proud of the team that I put together. While I was chairman, I raised more money than any other chairman in the state, $287,000. Also, I put together a team of 350 people. We turned out 77% of the registered Republicans. You can check it. It's on my website. We turned out 74.2% of the people within the city limits of Greensboro. Now, Guilford County has a Republican county commissioners, a majority, first time. We have a majority of Republicans down in the State House. I would like to think that my team, through our years of work, laid the groundwork to make that happen. But I decided to run for the vice chairmanship of the state party. I understand it's not about me saying, I want this policy and I want that policy. That's not my job. My job is to go out and turn out the votes so that we can get the majority that we have in Raleigh. I've worked 20 years to make sure that we've had that majority. And I'm not about to give it up yet. And the other thing about it is, as long as there's a Democrat in Raleigh, I want them gone. And as long as there's one in Forsyth County, I want those gone too. And if there's one in Guilford County, I want them all. Because for 140 years, they've dominated us. The reason that I chose to do this is because we need someone who can go in and sit down with the county chairman and say, I've dealt with the same things you've dealt with. I know what you're doing. I've been there, done that. Let me help you have the same success that my team is able to put together. Thank you, candidates. Uh, we will begin our questions, and we're going to start at this end of the table this time. Uh, each of you will have a chance of two minutes to respond to this question. 